heard the terms ADD and ADHD. What is the difference? Because you hear the terms used interchangeably. Today on The Revolution. Eight million kids and over five million adults are affected by it. The statistics touch one of our own. I have ADHD. Today, oh. I'm going to finally show you what it's like. The Rock is in. Recite the alphabet backwards. Um, Start throwing a few more balls on the table. If you had this disorder, would you know the signs? If you manage it right, this condition can take you to the heights. If you manage it wrong, it can ruin your life. Take our six-question quiz. I feel like I am jumping from task to task when I'm at home. Your revolution begins right now. are busy playing ping pong, but this is more than a friendly game. In a few minutes, they're going to help me attempt to show you how I perceive the world. Yes, it's a pretty scary thought. Now, as many of you guys know, I have ADHD, Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder. I was officially diagnosed at 17. Today, oh. I'm going to finally show you what it's like, right? Yes, absolutely. And this is really important to understand because Eight million kids and over five million adults are affected by it. A lot of these cases are undiagnosed. 30% of children are undiagnosed and 85% of adults right. undiagnosed. That is a lot of people having trouble in their day-to-day -day life and not knowing why. We brought in the country's leading expert on ADD and ADHD, Dr. Ned Hallowell. Welcome to the show. All right, doctor. How'd I do? Thanks for coming. You did great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, it's really good to have you here because uh, I know you're an expert on ADHD and ADD. Yes. Because you also have it, correct? I, I do as well as dyslexia. So you and I both will be great. Who knows if we'll even be able to finish a sentence exactly. today. Exactly. Who knows where we'll be. <laughs> but what is the difference? Because you hear the terms used interchangeably both within the medical community and in the lay public, ADD, ADHD, break it down for us. Well, technically it's all ADHD, Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder, but you can have it without hyperactivity. So that's ADD. ADHD with hyperactivity or ADHD without hyperactivity, most people know it as ADD. The, the important clinical point is uh, a lot of females, girls who have ADHD without hyperactivity don't get diagnosed because they're not disruptive. See, disruptive is what I am. So you're the yes. H. Yes, I put the H in ADHD. <laughs> yeah, but a lot of times people say ADD, I'm just like, I'm scatterbrained or whatever, but oh, they're still creative and they're so much fun to be around. But there's, there's a downside to it too that a lot of people don't realize. Tremendous downside. It, undiagnosed, this condition can ruin your family life, ruin your school life. Among adults leads to underachievement. Uh, I mean, the prison population is full of people with right. undiagnosed ADHD. Uh, the divorce, the employed the addicted so it's a good news diagnosis if you make the diagnosis because right. then you can skyrocket you can soar you can achieve your goals but without the diagnosis you can really flounder and that's yeah. why it's so important for people to understand it because and unexplained underachievement you know go get this diagnosis you, you can change your life for the better and understanding it is the key especially when we're talking about something that affects five to eight percent of the population mm. at, wow. least, at and, least and there are some exactly probably a lot more and there are some associated conditions that may have already been diagnosed that people should look for, right? Like some, in some cases, depression, dyslexia, which you have some anxiety or sleeping problems. What, do we know what the cause is or are we just more on the lookout for it today? Well, we, we know it's heritable. It runs in families. Uh, but, but what you said is, is very true. Most of the adults who have it get diagnosed depressed and, and, or anxious, which they are, but it's, that's not the underlying diagnosis. Right. The underlying right. dose is ADD, so they, they get treated their depression and anxiety, but their ADD never gets treated, so they never have the radical improvement that they could have. So what does the typical person with ADD look like? Do they look like Ty, or what? It has nothing to do with what you look like, but I mean. <laughs> not not right. physically. Yeah, yeah, that's right. It's so concrete. But what are the Well, I think they're, they're probably the kind of person like me who you know, it's funny, uh, I can start a sentence and, you know, you're going down the road like, wow, where's this sentence going? And all of a sudden you're like, uh, it's never going to end. But, but wait a second, it jumps trains and now that, that, that well, sentence is going in another direction. Can I tell my Thai story? The first right. time I met you, first of all, you were the nicest guy ever. As soon as I was like, wow, he's so nice, he's so personable. You are better looking in person than you are on TV. I got to tell going you, you're doing great. <laughs> but I asked you a question. I said, yes. I said, hold on. 
I said, how long have you been in New York? Because we just, you just gotten in town, I think. And you started telling me a story about finding a Vespa, an old vintage yeah. bike somewhere, and then about a, tr a flight situation. And then at the end, I was like, how long have you been in New York? <laughs> <laughs> but is, this, is that the typical, is there a profile? I'm sure yes. someone listening, what, what things might tip them off that they or someone they know might have ADHD? On the, on the downside, unexplained right. underachievement. Yes. Whether it's sixth grade or adulthood, you know you could be doing better. You may be a straight-A student, mm. you may be a Nobel Prize winner, but you know you could be doing better, and you're frustrated, unexplained underachievement. And then with that, trouble with staying focused consistently, hyper-focus at times, space out at other times, trouble getting organized, trouble sweating the details, trouble tolerating frustration, impatient, you got to hurry, cut to the bottom line, vectoring, tangentializing mm. all the time. That's the downside. Then on the upside, these folks tend to be creative, intuitive, dynamic, wow. charismatic, Sure. Interesting, deep, generous. I mean, uh, and all those positives you can't buy or teach. Right. Uh, so I often say it's like having a race car for a brain. You've got this incredible, dynamic, powerful brain right. with bicycle brakes. Yeah, I mean, for me, like, I think a lot of people don't realize too that the lack of confidence you get because when you when you grow up with ADHD and you don't even know what it is, you don't, you know, no one understands. You know, the one thing you notice is, okay, there's the kid, the class clown. Like, you know, I was I was literally witnessed, uh, you know, by my mom who was studying uh, to be a child psychologist, like climbing in and out, I mean, like running around naked, I me mean, doing all these things. But it's, you're sort of making up for trying to be entertaining because you did not retain any of the lessons that all the other kids did. And so when they come back and ask you, do you understand what you, you just instead of answering the question, you make a joke to try and like say that I don't really have an answer for that, but how about something funny? And, and as so, a young child, that must be such an uncomfortable it's, position. It's weird because you don't know how to explain that you didn't retain it, and so everyone's expecting you to make a decent grade, but you're making horrible grades, but they they know and they can tell that you're like fairly intelligent, right. but you can't right. seem to like get that on paper. And so that underachieving leads right. to depression right. and, and lack right. of confidence. And right. that's the real disability, that right. feeling of shame, right. that I'm a loser, that I'm stupid, that's the disability. Right. And, and if you get the ADD treated, the next thing you know, you can use all your smarts, you right. can use that race car brain, you've learned to strengthen your brakes, and then you're achieving at a very high level. But what, what's important to understand is that it affects your relationship, whether or not you can communicate with your partner, it affects your job, whether or not they're going to hire you to get the job done, it affects everything. So Dr. Al and I, I we want to show you like what it's like to be inside a person's head the, right. when they have ADD, or in my case, ADHD. <laughs> all right, so Harley okay. and Jim, why don't you guys start oh, playing boy. ping pong? All right. This is going to be fun. It's a Great little learning lesson. Harley, on exactly um, are you ready to be embarrassed on, on national television? Okay, so you guys start playing ping pong. Awesome. Staying focused on the game, right? So, now the best way to really explain this and so what's going on in my head is once they start playing the game, then all of a sudden you start throwing a few more balls on the table oh just boy, to see if they can still focus on that. Right? And then, <laughs> audience, will you stand up and applaud on this side for a second? You guys stand up, applaud. Excellent. Will you guys stand up and applaud on this side and keep switching out? Will you guys sit down, switch out? So, Dr. Jim, with all this excitement going on, can you do me a favor? Yeah. Can you recite the alphabet backwards? Um, was that to concentrate just now? That was br uh, let me answer for you, Harley. It was, you couldn't do it. <laughs> Welcome to my world. It was brutal. But that's sort of what's going on out there. And, now, and interesting how it just paralyzes your brain. You get those distractions, and if that's what your day-to-day -day life is, you can see how difficult it can be. So when we come back, is undiagnosed ADD or ADHD hurting your kids or even ruining your job or marriage? We'll be joined by a man who says it's happening to him. We'll also tell you what everybody should know about diagnosing yourself or your kids. That's next. about ADD or ADHD. Now, does your child forget her chores or forget his assignments? Is your husband easily distracted or does he have trouble finishing projects at home or at work? If ADD or ADHD affected your loved one, would you be able to recognize it?
So leading ADD and ADHD expert, Dr. Ned Hallowell is back with us to talk us through how to diagnose and to treat it. And I really want to start with children, because obviously that's the area that most people are familiar with, hearing this diagnosis. Mm -hmm. According to the CDC, the diagnosis rates have increased over 5% every single year since 2003. Begs the question, are we diagnosing it correctly, or is there an increase? Is there a trend? What do you think is behind that increase in diagnosis? Well, it's good news and bad news. The good news is we're, we're educating doctors more effectively, teachers, parents, and so more kids are getting the help who need the help. Right. The bad news is, uh, in some places, it's overdiagnosed. Uh, every child who comes in who's getting a bad grade gets diagnosed with ADHD, which shouldn't happen. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, you, get, you have some doctors in some regions who say, I don't believe in ADHD, as if it were a religious principle. You know? right. So, so what, 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 what we want to do is, is educate parents, doctors, teachers effectively so that everyone who needs the help can get it, but those who don't need the help, don't get it. And by the way, while we're talking about diagnosis, Ty, you were diagnosed by a psychiatrist. In your opinion, who is the proper health care professional to make this diagnosis? Well, that, it, someone who knows what they're doing. And, and that, that's the problem. It could be pediatrician, child psychiatrist, psychiatrist, neurologist, uh, developmental pediatrician, psychologist. What you want to ask is, do you have experience in diagnosing this in children and adults? There is no test for ADHD, contrary to popular belief. The best test we've got is your history, right. as taken from the individual, from teachers, or in the case of adult spouse. It is the history where the diagnosis resides. So all these fancy tests, which I'm not opposed to getting, but they are not definitive. The definitive diagnosis is in your personal story. Yeah, it's really like it's, and even the professional, the doctor, will get in touch with the school and say, can I see what, you know, Teacher his comments. performance has yeah. been like in the last year, what the grades have been like, class right. participation, focus, all of that has been a distraction. And within a 20 minute conversation, you can pretty much tell whether or not the child has got ADHD, that's for sure. That's interesting. And ADD as well, because in the ADD kids, you'll hear uh, needs more discipline, right. mind wanders. But it's not just kids. Absolutely. It's, it's adults, right. and like, right. there's 50% of Americans that uh, have ADHD and have not even been diagnosed. Oh, more than that among yeah, the adults. 80%, right. 80%, 80 right. of adults who don't know they have it. And, and, and that drives me crazy, because if only they knew they had it, right. their That's careers right. could advance, their marriages could advance, they get off the addicted, get off the unemployed, and, and, and go to the well, heights. We, we have somebody here in the audience, Arthur, who was diagnosed eight years ago, correct? Yes. Hi, Arthur. Hi. So what were the first symptoms that you noticed? When did, I mean, how did you figure out that you might have ADHD? Yeah, what was going on in your life when you were diagnosed? Well, you know, I, I think you've described it a lot uh, with regards to the, you know, switching jobs a lot and getting up to a point where you'd advance, but then everything would get out of control, but almost as if you'd advanced too far. Um, I was also having marriage problems uh, and the lack of ability to focus on, you know, tasks, whether it was work or even home. So I started reading about ADHD and realized that I probably had this since I was a child. And looking back, I could see and read all of the uh, symptoms. And then I went out and I found some professional help that uh, confirmed it. Has made a big difference. Now sitting next to you, Arthur, is Alicia. You're a mom with a son with ADD. And now you're wondering if you yourself may have it as well. What, what gives you that True. suspicion? True. Um, I feel like I am jumping from task to task when I'm at home um, it, 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 to the point where I'll run and check an email and then I'll say, oh crap, I forgot, I have to go get the clothes out of the dryer and then I'll hop over to something else and then the phone will ring. I don't actually ever just touch a piece of paper once and put it away. I'm, I feel very disorganized and I, I run my own business. And, and how I many moms probably feel that. exactly the same way you do? Now, Dr. Holloway, speak to us a little bit about is there a hormonal basis or contribution and is there a cultural aspect to this also? Yes and yes. Uh, hormones uh, during adolescence for, for uh, kids and uh, menopause and male menopause as well. You know, so, so hormones absolutely contribute to mentation, cognition, attention. Uh, culturally, absolutely. But a interestingly enough, when we do uh, epidemiological studies around the world, we find roughly the same incidence in, in different cultures around the world. I think one of the other things too is that's really key with ADHD. Like, a, you know, and it could be a two story just because I thought it was cool and I'm like, oh, I think I just snapped my arm. Should have thought before I did that. But my point is there are other choices in life that you make that you don't think about and they can affect everything. It can affect other people's lives. And I think well, what's with that, that's why it's so important is because sometimes you can really make some tough decisions that you can never erase. Right. 
because you just didn't think ahead. That's a, the impulsivity is a good point. Okay, In the okay. little bit of time we yes, have left, yes. just quickly go through the treatment options for people, and obviously sure. there's a lot more sure. to learn. Well, treatment begins with education, what we've been doing. That's critical. Uh, then lifestyle changes, uh, sleep, diet, meditation, uh, uh, nutrition makes a difference, um, uh, exercise, particularly exercises that stimulate the cerebellum, so balancing exercises, juggling, structure, adding structure to your life, getting a coach, getting organized, uh, and then medication, which is, people are so afraid of, but they shouldn't be. Medication works about 80% of the time, and when it works, it works like eyeglasses. Right. You can suddenly yeah. see, and, and the beauty of stimulant medication it's been around for 80 years, unlike almost all the other meds we use in this field. Very safe, very effective. It shouldn't be feared as it is feared. See a doctor who knows what he or she is doing, and, and it's safer than aspirin. Dr. Hallowell, thank you so much for being here. Thank you, uh, Alicia. Thank you, uh, Arthur, for telling your stories. But when we come back, could what you're actually eating be affecting your ability to focus? We'll find out next.